Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin of the National College of Ireland and in this short video I want to show you how to use absolute cell referencing in Excel. So to start off here we have some very very simple financial data. I've got five balances here on the left hand side and what I want to do is to calculate the amount of interest uh, for each balance and then calculate a new balance once that interest has been added. So I've inserted my interest rate of 10% up here in cell B1 so I want to apply that interest rate to each of my previous balance figures. Now this is a very short a number of accounts here but imagine a spreadsheet with hundreds and thousands of accounts so what I don't want to do is have to do is to write in separate formulas for each of these five ones here so what I'd like to be able to do and you can do this in Excel is to write the formula once and then copy that formula into all the other cells so let's go ahead and do that so in cell B4 uh, what I want to do is uh, just apply the interest of 10% to 10,000, so that's a simple formula to multiply cell A4 by cell B1. And we can see 10% of 10,000 is 1,000, so we know that our formula has been calculated correctly here. Now in Excel, you know that there is a fill handle, which is a small box in the bottom right-hand corner of each cell. And if you pick that up, your mouse will change to crosshairs, and when you drag that down to other uh, areas the formula and contents of that cell will be copied down so what I wanted to do was copy the content the formula in cell B4 down to my other f cells as well so that I would not have to retype out that formula but as you can see something has gone wrong when we select cell B5 and press F2 we can see that the formula has changed to A5 which is correct and it's being multiplied now by B2 which is incorrect. What Excel has done is it has correctly moved down the previous balance row by one row when I've copied the formula down but it has also copied down the um, from B1 down to B2 which is what I don't want to happen. When I look at other cells, a similar thing has happened. I've got the right amount, uh, the contents of cell A6 in this case, being multiplied by the contents of B3, which has moved down another line. That, of course, is the, are the words interest added. And when you multiply interest added by 3,000, you're not going to get a proper value, as you can see here. Similarly, when you move on to the next formula, you can see that the uh, A7 is a correct amount, and it's being multiplied by B4, which is a figure of 1,000 from cell B4. Again, that's incorrect. It should be B1. And in the last cell here, we can see that the formula is AH multiplied by B5. The AH is correct, but the B5 isn't. We wanted that to remain at cell B1. So let's go back and delete all these cells because they're no use to me anymore and do this thing a little bit differently. So how do I get my formula to copy down the balances in column A, as we have already done, uh, but retain the value of the contents of cell B1? So let's relook at the formula in cell B4, the original formula that we did. And this is equal to A4 multiplied by B1. Now we know that this formula has already calculated the right amount. So what we want to do in Excel is use the dollar sign and put that um, in be before the letter B and before the number 1. And what this will do is it will fix um, the contents of cell B1 for any formula that I copy down uh, uh, from now on. When I press return on that, we can see that the results of the formula have not changed. Uh, it's still 1,000, which of course is 10% 10 of 10,000. When I select to copy down that formula down to the remaining cells here, we can now see by checking the each result that the amount of interest that has been uh, calculated looks correct. 10% uh, of 500 is 50 uh, and so on. So, so far, so good. Our figures look very, very good. Let's take a look and see how the formulas have changed. In cell B5 now, which is the first copied down cell, we can see that the amount A5 is correct as before, but now the dollar B dollar $1 symbol has been copied down as well, so it has not changed to B2. When we go to the next cell, we can see that something similar has happened. When we go to cell B7, we can see the amount multiplied is A7, still being multiplied by um, the contents of B1, encased by the dollar signs. And in the final cell B8 here, we can see that the amount in cell A8 has been multiplied once again by the contents of cell B1, which are our interest rate. So that looks like it's correct, and uh, the content interest rate has been correctly applied in each of the cases.
Now what we want to do is to calculate our new balance, and that's quite simple. We just add the interest to the previous balance to give us the new balance. So that's A4 uh, plus B4, which gives us a new balance of 11,000. And once again, we know that's correct because 10,000 plus 1,000 is 11,000. When I copy that formula down to the remaining cells, a glance at the figures tells us that our new balance figures have been calculated correctly. In this case here, we can see in, in cell C5 this time that the Excel has correctly copied down both the line for previous balance and the line for the interest added. So in this case, we want uh, the contents of the column B to change with the formula. And when we look down at the other formulas, we can see in each case that uh, the contents of cell B have been copied down as we want them to do. So in column C, we are using ordinary cell reference, but in column B, we are using absolute cell references with the dollar sign. Huge advantage of this is that if I change the interest rate, in this case from 10% down to 8%, um, all my formulas that I've now done will change automatically. So I don't have to go in and apply a different interest rate and different formulas at any time. That concludes this how-to video. I hope you found this useful. My name is Eugene O'Loughlin and thank you for your attention.